Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this evening, I am continuing with my uh, view, my theme, you know, about the heart and the head. It seems that the ancient has already struggled to understand whether our feeling or thinking is whether it exists in our heart or in our head, you know, and also where the soul is. So you will see all those uh, information jam into uh, well, two little uh, symbols. One is a circle with a cross. The other one is a circle with a dot inside they sometimes they are can be used interchangeably so um, I'm going to start my uh, slide uh, if I'm going too fast again please uh, type the name in YouTube and you can watch it again okay uh, this is the basket starfish and and yes and with the core I don't believe that we share we are different family trees uh, because they will usher in human hierarchy uh, once again I hope it can be changed because you know only uh, by seeing things like that we can look at each other in a more equal ground uh, first of all I uh, have been showing you this also a cross-section of a barley root instead of looking at a root up and down like the Eurocentric patriarchal uh, view which brings in hierarchy uh, I suggest that we can also look at the root from a different point of view like uh, cut it across it from a Protection, and then all those things that you've been taught, you know, about different family trees. As you can see, the, this Proto-Indo-European tree, which you know, uh, English and German uh, become so big because most of the linguists are actually German or, or, or Dutch or English, right? So uh, all the little branches are being squeezed in, and and they actually ignore uh, all the rest, and they just randomly assign them to different trees uh, but my view is that if you look at uh, it as a center if we uh, look at uh, 360 degree across we can actually uh, see that we all share one common core um, this core definitely is the heart that we share okay all dif different languages that I uh, use some very uh, generic terms you know to to describe and okay and uh, what I'm presenting to you definitely is an Asian female perspective and it is based on life you know based on my last you know 30 something years of traveling either for for the reason of art study or for the reason of chasing after the, the common core of language and then uh, because I based on life you know I found that a lot of Western linguistic law actually doesn't work in Chinese why is it so if uh, it actually uh, if they believe that it, it govern human language why is it uh, it doesn't work in Chinese language or some other languages so there must be something uh, wrong about it so I suggest that you actually um, take yourself away from the two Eurocentric view look at things you know with a different pair of eyes and uh, because uh, the uh, Eurocentric view pays too much attention in grammar and precisely grammar is just like a local habit you know it separates us into different cultures so the more we look at it the more we think we are different um, because I actually found that we share many many core sound and many many symbols and also of course we share a lot of identical beliefs, you know, and I would say unexplainable some of them, you know, I will try to explain them to you. I wouldn't be so proud to say that I can explain everything because this uh, this is um, talking about many thousands of human history, thousand years of uh, many, many thousands of uh, years of human history. So I can do my best to explain to you from my Asian point of view, okay? Once again, continue from last two weeks. Again, the symbol of the heart and the head, okay? And this two very symbol, and, and uh, as I said, you know, the more, uh, they definitely is the marker of a center. As you can see, you can use it interchangeably in many different occasions, uh, because the more symbol, uh, simple symbols are, uh, the more possibility they carry, you know? So, um, but one thing very, very important that I want you to understand why it, why we say heart or head where is that H sound came from is from one of the very uh, earliest human technology it's become the helix of our trailing the 
first piece of thread okay this is a uh, Egyptian hieroglyph the H stang he. so you will see that later on you know this will become the Phoenician the ancient um, Hebrew and, and a bunch of Western alphabet you know actually is also representing a, he a helix and you will see that this is where uh, the present word heart or head came from because it is representing the center uh, no matter where you are thinking or wh where your thought and feelings are those two organs you know are always representing the center of our action okay so once again uh, when I chase further back you know uh, the understanding of the ancient uh, in an, a very an, uh, animated world, you know, in a very, very uh, original world. The Sumerian will have, you know, the uh, essence and a piece of grass like this. As you can see, this is actually the kernel of growth. And the Chinese also have this. Both of them represent actually a, a grass or a reed, okay? Before we domesticated plants you know they are just uh, common weeds or reed okay so um, you will see that they both represent that uh, head of growth with a, a a shaped head okay this is representing the unseen energy of course it also means the heart and the head of growth okay so uh, the Sumerian or, uh, carry on, you know, they have this very, very interesting sign also to show, you know, some unseen energy of movement. And the Chinese also uh, have the same, representing the same thing, unseen energy or movement. And then you will see that Sumerian, when they started to, to, to talk about the rope or the trailing action, you will already see that cross sign right there, headed by two uh, bull head right there. And then this... Uh, actually represent the rope and if you look at the Chinese side we actually have a lot of words also like that you will also see that that uh, energy head uh, also leads that uh, and that circle right there so you will see that the Sumerian the Chinese actually sh actually share very very uh, subtle idea that in their head okay so um once again i go back to the heart where you get that word of course up till this day uh, even when you go to the uh, world of dna you will see still see that helix and then uh of course since ancient time it already because of the thread itself it already you know represented the h sign you will have to imagine it you know moving like this and then this is also the H sound in Sumerian you just have to look at it 90 degrees flip the other way okay and then this is ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyph this is Chinese both of them represent the H sound in Chinese I can tell you Hai actually does mean a lineage or it also means the rope the thread a system okay so the western world took on this form you know they already show themselves in Phoenician alphabet in ancient Hebrew and and proto sinaitic they are both they are all the H sound okay so you can imagine them all trailing around and further on you know this is Greek you know Greek still maintain the H sound her and then uh, when you whenever, whenever you see this symbol it always represent the hair of course you know this is the fiber itself that turn into you know you turn it into a rope you can see that this part is actually become the Greek uh, X right there okay of course the the Greek alphabet you know uh, maintain the her sound and uh, I will show you one very interesting Greek word which is uh, you can also imagine it turning like that and then this is the X song Exxon is actually the English word exo. And you will see that the Greek is actually like drawing pictures. They uh, they draw this, you know, leader of the action A, and then this uh, trilling uh, action, you know, which become, you know, an alphabet, and actually means the exo. You will see that later on, um, the uh, Latin world or actually adopted it in a different way, use it as the X, but of course, you know, for them, you know, they also understood it as a picture trilling that way. So may, no matter whether you are Greek or you are a, a Roman reading it the other way then you can still understand it is the center of a trilling movement okay 
So again, uh, the head and the head and the core. So it actually involved, you know, a lot of different understanding right there. This is Sumerian heart. You know, you will see that it followed the, the same line of sound with the se or shin sound. And then this is the Chinese head. We pronounce it as sun. And you will see that we are very, very similar. This is heart. This is head. Okay. And then um, the Chinese also for, uh, follow the same sound system the sum actually means the heart so whatever you will see either it follow the picture or follow the sound okay this part is Chinese this part is Sumerian this is head this is he this is heart this is head and this is heart in Chinese okay and later on the Chinese you know this is Mandarin sound it, it actually um, spelled differently but you can under, uh, pronounce it as shin as well in a way it still followed a similar s sound okay so later on the writing become like this you will see that somehow you know it become very ambiguous it become look like you know also the bull head again okay so later on you will see that the chinese word thinking or thought actually is the head part plus the heart part so um, the soul and or you or you can understand as the conscious they have a hard time understanding whether they lived in the head or the heart okay so anyway this is how they uh, express their thinking like this in ancient China so let me go on to this back to the Sumerian world so the thinking that initiate an action a physical action you will see that the Sumerian actually turned all the feet upside down and they equipped it with this little tool right there it seems that they are already with that a little head right there to move the feet the Chinese exactly the same thing you know the feet also you know is equipped with the little part that actually like the head that thinks yeah and and I will quote you know a quote for you you know this is uh, a very famous American mathematician that he says that a genius is simply someone who's usefully irritated so this irritation actually is like a, an idea a drive or energy or a spark of curiosity or just simply a desire that push people to action and action always become you know a creation okay so you will see that until now that little thing still for us uh, uh, represent a drive and energy or an idea so um, the Sumerian already have that hard part put in the Foot, and then the Chinese also have the hard part put in the foot to mean action. So let me take you to the uh, uh, Egyptian hieroglyph world. So they, of course, they have the foot too, but they have the the bull head representing the soul. Of course, the soul is also the energy that moves the the feet, right? And then the other way, you know, you will see that gradually become a very patriarchic world. Okay, and then you will see that this and this actually share the same sound pun with each other so this bull actually is representing of the male organ so either it is the desire that move or a thinking from the head that moves you know so um, later on if I compare it to the uh, back to the proto Greek world this is what you call linear B the linear B actually have also the core sound uh, representing this they will use this quarry to uh, say a little boy okay of course you understand that very easily this is the penis of a male okay so you will see that why is it the Chinese also somehow at this time you know this is actually um, the second stage of the Chinese writing somehow it actually go back you know to the uh, like uh, coincide with the Western world, the core. So if I take it here, I understand it in the Latin word core, which is the heart in Latin. So you will see that the Chinese can understand this, and also the the, the Latin speaking people can also understand this. The representation of the heart. Okay. So later on, it actually uh, go back, you know, to to um uh, to look like you know the the bull head like this okay so i will bring you to this again so no matter how you look at it it still uh, represent a little energy a little soul or desire that the ancient understood so that's how the chinese ancient chinese put the heart a head and the heart together to mean the thought okay so if you look at it 
continuously. The Chinese they have further development. So further on, later we have a new sound coming in. This become the our no sound. Uh, all my pronunciation is in Cantonese. Okay, Cantonese sounds more ancient than Mandarin. So I use Cantonese as the base. Okay, so the no actually means the brain for for us Chinese. But actually, no in ancient Greek it actually means the intelligence. Sometimes it means the part you know between the two eyes exactly where the Hindus you know represent the third eye where the intelligent is okay so you can understand it somehow as the neural you know where uh, what to do with um, your brain okay so let us look at the word like this the Greek word so this gnosis later on become the Latin word actually the girl sang actually you know uh, is part of taking from the soul right there the no actually is the intelligent you know part of the word so gnosis actually uh, somehow links to the consciousness somehow if they the ancient understood that the consciousness you know uh, push us to seek knowledge so that's how even the word knowledge still spell exactly the same way the the part no actually right here actually is linked to the brain part okay so um, I will go on uh, the uh, slide is a little bit complicated but I hope you can go back to the YouTube and watch it again okay so the neuro uh, if you look at the word neuro even in English somehow it links to the head but if you said neuron then automatically you will link it to the heart so the head and the heart is actually inseparable since ancient time okay so even uh, including this two symbol so I keep searching so I follow the sound I, I found this ancient Sumerian they have the new sound this new actually have a four different at least four different you know area of meaning first of all it represents the male genitalia of course the penis it also means the sperm and it also means the creator it also means the begetter you will see that at this time you know the patriarch actually uh, already talked over a lot of this meaning actually a very male meaning except the begetter you can understand the begetter as the female of course giving birth can only be the female okay so but it goes on to mean the man and the offspring so but without the underlying uh, woman you this thing can never come to be okay so it also means the very simple sp word spin so if you look at the word again you know this actually means the rope of course you spin a, uh, and trail into a rope and the Chinese word also this has to do with the plating itself it also has to do with the fiber and then uh, of course in English you can understand the the nexus of the center of the trailing movement and of course you know even in Chinese I can give you the sound of now now in Chinese also means the twisting movement okay so but of course you know if you don't go to the uh, physical world you can go into our uh, human uh, organ part you know you can understand it's the nerve because the nerve is the center of everything okay so of course if I take you to the ancient Egyptian uh, world you can understand this creator the begetter to represent you know by this bull head right there which is linked to this bull head which is linked to the Chinese bull head right there and then of course because the patriarch took over took over and then you will see that you know the the meaning you know for the ancient Sumerian is also shared by the uh, ancient um, uh, Egyptian hieroglyph and then uh, by the penis itself and then of course it will link Brings you back to the heart of the Chinese, you know. So the Chinese, uh, I mean, the ancient were trying to figure out where is our desire came from, whether it came from our heart or we came from our our head, or it actually came from the physical organ of the male. Okay, so. And um, let's compare why the abstract symbol uh, versus the pictor pictograph. And if I look at the heart and the head in this two very uh, concise symbol, and you can actually understand it. I have already shown you all the pictograph. This can actually in Chinese means the surf. And of course from surf because of the clearness, it actually leads to the uh, sari and savan, the, uh, the clearness of the cleverness. Okay. And then of course it also become the base 
because it can easily because of the sieve it can be understood as the as the nest you sit on and I will show you this is an, an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph and uh, more clearly this is a, actually a Chinese writing it actually means the dwelling and we actually understood it so the bird sitting on the nest look at uh, this how uh, e how easily you can link this together and the more detail the pictograph give you know the the, the more easily you know um, uh, you know uh, 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 abstract symbol can hide all the details okay but you can uh, because of so simple you can also understand the city of course you know uh, the ancient Egyptian actually used a sign like this to mean a city I mean a location okay and then and then um, it means a nation, of course, you know, also uh, the bird sitting in the, on the nest, you can also understand it's a group of people, a different nation, okay? It can also mean uh, the compass, the direction, you can also understand it's a four quarter, the world, you can also understand the navel, and this is to do is you can also under the center the fountain the fawn okay let's look at this side and um, the more simple it is it can also because of the heart you can also link it to the brain and because of the look of it you can understand it's the eye and also understand it's the breast you can understand as the teeth you can understand as the whole a hole you because of the hole you can understand as a mouth and opening and you can understand as a spring and because of the spring you can also understand as a vulva and as again back to the female part okay and then because of the look you can also understand in the male side of the sun okay and because of sun still now this is the symbol of the gold as well okay so the more simple they are the more uh, information that you can jam into it so let us compare them if I uh, compare them to ancient pictograph the Egyptian hieroglyph will use this to represent the eye okay and then um, later on you know they will uh, further on you know just the pupil of the eye they have the sound of ma okay and then interestingly the Chinese has the same later the writing become like this we actually have the sound of Mo. We actually share very similar sound, and you know the eye, and then this is the Chinese way of expressing to look, you know, and then later on when we combine this sign and this sign together, we have another uh, sound. An, an actually exactly means your eye okay and then an actually comes to have to share the same sound in Hebrew just like the ein the representation is really the eye okay but later on this eye is not just an eye for them as a whole and gradually become like this and Hebrew modern Hebrew become like this but they, what they are trying to say here is shifting from the normal human eye to the eye of the female. You can actually see that as the pubic area of the female, okay? So that's why uh, constantly because the patriarchal world, um, this uh, alphabet, you know, in Hebrew always carry a very negative intonation because from then on they always try to hide the female part, okay? And then um, now if you look at the vulva itself, the sumer Marin actually uh, have this triangular you know part like this and then the Chinese actually have something like this but we try to understand it as the mouth but of course the mouth also means the female uh, entrance the female opening okay but um, this uh, is always shared between this one this look and this look and and somehow you know we try to avoid it also the Chinese patriarch also ex try to explain this you know as the human mouth but of course, you know, in a very interesting way, it always linked the female opening the, the vulva, okay? And then you can also understand it as a spring because, you know, this is the container of the, the, the worm itself. It actually contains the water that holds the baby. And let's look at the hieroglyph. And a hieroglyph actually ex have exactly the same shape, you know, to uh, hold the water. For them, this is actually, you know, the holding of the water. 
but then if you look at Sumerian become square again you know they put a dot there to meet to mean the well a spring the water holder and somehow it still point to the female part and then look at Chinese Chinese actually have the same you know look you know uh, the shape goes to hieroglyph and then this dot actually share with the Sumerian for us this is a sweet uh, water porn but somehow the reading actually share with the uh, Sumerian vulva so either all this ancient writing either they share the sound or they share the form so if you tell me they have no connection they don't communicate I really doubt it okay but because the uh, Eurocentric view of looking at it is always linear and they do not look at pictograph they do not share those information so we are looking at lang language in a very different lens okay so anyway um, if you I go to the Hebrew again this is ancient Hebrew this is their P sound right there for them this is the mouth this is the eye this is the mouth look at this they always share very physical uh, I mean the eye and the mouth in our physical body always share very very sim similar uh, you know meaning in our brain okay so um, you can look at it as the fountain itself but uh, because of it's a fountain you can also link it to a breast other than the worm the female breast is also a fountain so look at the Sumerian they represent the breast like this of course the hieroglyph represent the breast like this so you will see that the pictograph are very informative but of course nothing is perfect you can also confuse things but when things are so you know abstract uh, you can actually hide a lot of information behind it until the Greek came over this form this letter right there the letter actually took over you will see in the next slide it actually took over all the meaning of this but um, uh, again the uh, the tether form in ancient form actually took over all this different form until they finally get to this form so all through the ages the tether actually uh, hold all this different meaning that I show in the other slides but um, unfortunately again because of time I cannot show you this slide and um, please uh, I have to go slow but still my slow is I think very fast because I am jamming in so many different information from different culture and I hope uh, you have the patience and I hope you can rewatch it uh, to learn how to look at our human language from a different lens and please uh, rewatch it again I'm Sarah Chiu thank you for watching